I slow him down there. Give James something to do and be nice. <laughs> artist of African descent, was peering through a Best of Life anthology when she came across this picture. Instead of turning the page and shaking her head at the horrifying image, she made this. to life's only gesture at context, the sparse caption at the bottom of the photo, Williams titles her piece Accused Blowtorch Padlock. The magazine fails to contextualize its quick and easy reading of the photo, for the man pictured in the anthology was, in fact, not being lynched. Yet. The photo is a staggering testament to the gruesome methodology of lynching, which involved various stages of torture prior to what is popularly, popularly known as lynching. Thus, in breaking up her title into three words separated by lines, she reminds us that one was not simply lynched, as Life magazine would have us think. Before looking at the text, it's important to note Williams' choices in medium. She has taken the actual photo from Life magazine and ripped it out, placing it within an old window frame, and doesn't attempt to hide the ripped edges of the page. The fact that the page is ripped out constructs the artist as more than just a critical viewer, but a proactive one as well. In choosing an old window frame with four panes, she decenters the original as the main point of visual importance, placing it on the periphery, and adds three other silver prints that enlarge the image. In resizing the original photo, blowing it up and splicing it into three distinct sections, forcing the viewer to face the sequence of events that were undertaken so that this photo could exist. While she forces our gaze to peer closely at the disturbing image, she, so she shows the pliability of the photographic image. It can be manipulated, changed, resized, and reappropriated for different uses. Around the photo, she features her text in white writing, resembling chalk on a blackboard in one sense. Her use of tar paper reminds us of the practice of tarring and feathering as historically used by vigilante groups such as the mob. Finally, her use of text surrounding the imagery serves to favor a contextual experience of viewership that stresses the vital importance of critical viewer viewership. So often, histories have been defined as the images that quote-unquote, reveal their so-called essence. This is the Great Depression. This is World War II American triumph. This is revolution. However, in surrounding such a photo with text, Williams reminds us that this incident happened, yes, but the act of taking and displaying a photo of it is another thing entirely and requires a demanding viewer, unafraid to ask the questions left hidden by the answers. Instead of favoring the image of blackness that life favors, victimized and helpless, William centers the phrase, can you be black and look at this, directly above the images. In asking this seemingly simple question, Williams releases a flood of meanings. On a basic level, she calls into question the idea of viewership of photos such as this. Historically, photos of mob violence were sold to white citizens as souvenirs, 
White onlookers posed for the camera. Some even smiled and pointed. But that's not all Williams is asking when she asks, can you be black and look at this? She addresses the undeniable sensation of collective physical memory that figures largely in the lives of those of African ancestry. How does one of African ancestry construct a collective memory that has been literally burned into the flesh of those who have come before? However, instead of collapsing under the immense load of history, Pat Ward Williams continues in her critical investigation. She asks, who took this photo? How can this photo exist? And in her final call to us, the viewers, she says, somebody do something. By ending with a call to action, William forces one to recognize that the legacy of lynching in America was not fully composed of just mob violence, but equally, if not more so, composed of dissenting voices of African ancestry. This photo does not tell us anything about Ida B. Wells, who fought tirelessly to expose the gross hypocrisy and inherent white supremacist workings of the American social and judicial systems. This photo does not tell us anything about this piece of art by Meta Warwick Fuller. Or this one by Elizabeth Catlin. Or anything about Billie Holiday's wrenching performance of Strange Fruit. To focus as Life magazine does on the physical defamation of the black male body, it silences any further inquiry into parallel narratives of proactive organization and agency. But this work by Pat Ward Williams strips away the monolithic power of the photograph, giving us historical context, a critical indictment of the photographer, and most importantly, a call to action. Somebody do something. Southern trees that strange fruit blood on the leaves and blood at the root black bodies swinging in the southern breeze strange fruit hanging from the poplar trees Pastoral scene of the gallant south The bulging eyes and the twisted mouth Scent of magnolia, sweet and fresh. Then the sudden smell of burning flesh. Here is a fruit for the crows to pluck. For the rain together For the wind to suck For the sun to rock For the tree to dry Here is a strange and bitter cry.